Last year, the Florida Derby gave us our Kentucky Derby winner. Let's see if we can repeat it this year with a first look preview of the field. Trust the Profits is proud to be sponsored by Game of Silks. Go to silks.io to get in the game. Real ownership, real races, real rewards. Sure, bad cop. That's right. We got a new sponsor on board this week. You can check out the banner above Tim. Sherbet Coffee is here. And Tim, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, uh, I like to be a true salesman. So I tried Sherbet Coffee before I went to them and said, Hey, would you guys be interested in, in, in bringing your product on our channel? And I am a, uh, a believer in Sherbet Coffee before they started uh, this little promo they're doing this week for Florida Derby. You can go to sherbetcoffee.com, put in the, the promo code TTP20. You'll get 20% off of your coffee. Uh, Tim, you've tried it. Not bad. Yeah, no, I, I mean, better than not bad. I mean, let, let, let me say this. I, I'm not a, a coffee drinker as much as an espresso drinker. I like to clarify that. Uh, all my years in Europe with the military, I, I love a good espresso. So they do have an espresso blend. I, I tried it. I, I really like it. Now, it's not as strong as a lot of the, my, my favorite espressos, but what I like is a lot of the sp- the espressos that you drink will uh, will hit your stomach pretty hard and give you a gut punch. And this is really good coffee and everybody should use that code and give it a try. Yeah, check it out. You'll see them across our channel for this week. And what's most important, they give back to the aftercare of horses. So how can you not support a business that is doing that for these wonderful athletes that we absolutely adore, Tim? And speaking of athletes that we adore, a uh, big weekend as we just passed the Jeff Ruby and uh, the Louisiana Derby. What are your thoughts? Would anybody jump off the page at you? Have you have a new revelation on this year's Kentucky Derby? I I don't know that I have a new revelation. I I have some thoughts on on some horses that you know I've been on for a little bit. I I've been on Catching Freedom. I, I, I thought that that was a, a really good race. Uh, Catching Freedom is a horse that uh, I was ready to forgive for that last one. I, uh, as we did our reaction video yesterday, this is the pick that I had. I thought Catching Freedom ran a really good race, and I'm interested to see this horse going forward. I think he moves right into, at least for me, the top three of Kentucky Derby contenders. Yeah, and the big thing is, right, these races, 100 points to the winner, 50 points for second place. So you almost automatically, well, you basically do get a buy into the Derby, but we've heard endlessly who picked up the victory at Turfway, probably not most likely going to the Derby. So now you start playing that game of when you get down to the bottom of, you know, you know, you get the first 20, you know, the second or third week of April, and then slowly that out of that top 20, they start dwindling down and maybe the points around 25, 30 has generally been enough to get you in, but just take care of business, get a first or second over the course of the next couple of weekends and find your way into the Kentucky Derby. Of course, this week, and we are going to preview here, the Florida Derby, and it's the return of fierceness, a horse whose running style is an E6 with Brisnet. Obviously, he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and then he came back and finished third in the Holy Bull. He's the horse that had a huge debut, uh, then ran the Champagne and didn't look like himself, then had the big Breeders' Cup Juvenile, then comes back in the Holy Bull and struggles a little bit. And you get a little bit of this, well, which fierceness are we going to get, Tim? Are you in the camp of the fierceness that won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, or are you in the camp of he's going to perform like he did in the Holy Bull? I expect to see fierceness on his A game here. And and I say A game and uh, – we, we, uh, we call this an A-B pattern in the game. A lot of people are familiar with that term to where a horse seems to throw a really good race and a not so great race and, you know, an A and a B. And that's the way it's been with fierceness so far. So I'm looking for an A. I'm looking for an A game out of fierceness. I like fierceness a lot coming in here. You look at that 22 March bullet workout the horse is coming off of. That's as fast as the horse has worked four furlongs. I, I, I went back and looked at that three February uh, day at Gulfstream Park and, you know, that that race fierceness right out of the gate uh kind of got pinballed back and forth got hit from the outside hit from the inside went back and forth 
if, if you look at that ride, Johnny V seemed to have had a full uh, hand on the, the reins holding that horse back. And I'm not sure Fierceness wanted to be up on the lead. I'm not sure that was their game plan, even though the, the horse has clearly shown speed in the past. But I think he wanted to take back a little bit, maybe clear horses from his position. But the, the way Johnny V had his high hands and pulling on the reins, uh, Fierceness seemed a little keen early. And uh, I'm just not sure that the horse was ever comfortable. As they got into the lane, horse uh, Fierceness did put a, a head in front a little bit, but seemed empty and then just kind of faded late. Uh, so I, I think, you know, we talk a lot of in our handicapping and some of the things we do about that Breeders' Cup coming off the Breeders' Cup and how horses a lot of times need a race coming out of that. And I, I'm going to give Fierceness a pass on that. It's our two-year-old champion. I think we're going to see the A game. Uh, and uh, I, I like fierceness a lot in the Florida Derby. It's one of my favorite angles to play against is horses that win the Breeders' Cup their next time out, and that's in the Complete Handicapper book by Matt Quinn. That's something that he talks about, is that those horses are going to get overbet, they get jacked up, and really, you know, the, the goal is to win their Breeders' Cup. So the next time out, it's either coming off of a layoff or just getting them back on the, on the track, and people see Breeders' Cup victory, and they immediately – you know, put the money down thinking that that horse is going to be superior sure. to the others. Uh, if fierceness comes out here in the Florida Derby and puts up a really strong performance, I mentioned in the open that last year, this race produced Forte and Mage. And obviously Forte had some issues morning of with the scratch, not getting into the gate. Mage then came on to win the Florida, uh, the Kentucky Derby last year out of this race. Fierceness, let's say he comes out and puts up a big performance, Tim. Is that where all the chatter is immediately going to go back to? And are people going to forget about the Holy Bull? I, I think so. I, you know, it, it was it was much like early on with Fierceness. Uh, came out in uh, in the first race and really did well. And then came back in the Champagne and everybody was all over the horse. And then came back in, in the Breeders' Cup and there wasn't as much talk, honestly, about Fierceness. So I think it, it'll be much the same case here. And if Fierceness comes out and, and shows uh, that he can run the way that we know he can and runs his race, I think it's his race to, to win. And uh, and we will uh, see everybody kind of getting back on this horse who was the early derby derby favorite probably will be again. Yeah. And he comes out of the same race as Hades who returns here. That's a 56 day uh, since the last time they raced. That's eight weeks. Any concern with fierceness and Hades uh, who have some of the longest layoffs coming into the Florida Derby? Not so much, really. I, I don't think that's too long uh, in this particular case. Uh, I, I I like uh, giving the horse a little bit of time. And in that particular day, when you look at the race, uh, when when I went back and looked at all of the races that particular day, they, it, it was uh, this the track wasn't really favoring speed a lot up front. Uh, early on, uh, I, I know if you if you go back and you look at the Holy Bull undercard that day and look at all of the races, none of the uh, the horses that were up front early were holding on. Uh, you got real macho in this race who uh, was in the undercard that day at an option claiming event uh, and, and came uh, from behind to beat Born Noble, who was a huge favorite that day, who was running on the lead. So I, I'm just not sure that that was a, a great place to be in the middle of the track with speed that particular day. Now, if you look at real macho, real macho came back on the fountain in the fountain of youth on the 2nd of March. And uh, that particular day, speed was holding. That was the day that Dornock kind of went gate to wire and speed was holding a little better. So uh, I, I just think that uh, if the track plays honest, that uh, fierceness can raid off of what might be a little bit of a contentious pace in here. And uh, I think we got three or four that might want to be up front. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes and how it all plays out. And if the track is playing fair, uh, I'll be watching the races early on uh, in particular to see how it looks like the dirt is playing that day. And if speed is not holding, uh, you you may uh, want to look elsewhere. Yes, yeah, going back to that layoff, I think it's interesting that that Breeders' Cup performance by Fierceness was about less than a month, right? That was a return from that champagne in less than a month. Right. Then he has the long layoff coming into the Holy Bowl. We know how he performed in the Holy Bowl. Now he's got, a, to me, another considerable layoff, which, uh, you know, considerable in the fact that, I, to me, it's it's a while, right? I mean, you feel like we haven't seen him in a very long time. So maybe there's a hiccup, but then you're going to be getting him back in the Kentucky Derby. You know, what is it? We're, we're five weeks out. 
um, five to six weeks out. So it's going to be a little bit shorter period of time right. than what you saw between those big ones. And maybe that's kind of talking about racing him back in into form and, and setting up into a better position for him. Let's let's transition to what you just talked about, which is the pace. Uh, I have Hades, Seminole Chief, and Le Dombro as kind of the horses that I imagine being up on the front end. Um, do you envision this being a pretty hot pace? Because Brisnet has, look at all these horses with the EP designation, M Seminole Chief with an eight means that he will absolutely be forwardly placed. You see that 96 under the E1. But for me, a horse like Hades, who although he gets an EP6, uh, is going to be more of a probably closing, right, with 106 late speed. Um, he was the one that came flying last time out. Uh, but he's been been fairly forwardly placed. The, just the speed figures there from a Brisnet standpoint don't represent represent that. Do you think this will be a hot pace and you, you want a horse on the front end or maybe one coming from off? I, I, I want to be just off that pace. I, I want to be just behind those leaders. And I think with Forte drawing outside and, and what I was talking about, about maybe not wanting that lead early on, seeing that uh, they've got decent pace to the inside of them, I, I would uh, really like to, if I was a trainer of Forte, I'd want to see him sitting just off of that hot early pace on uh, uh, first uh, first off of that behind uh, the first three or four that decide to go there and just ready to make my move as we move into the stretch. And that, that to me is the race that Fierceness ran in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, and I, I think if he runs that race, he, uh, he wins uh, over this field. Turning my attention to the number nine, Conquest Warrior. This is a horse that's been on my top 10, top 15 derby list uh, much sooner than everybody else in here. He was kind of a horse that I that I circled out of the Sire of City, by the Sire of City of Light. A $1 million purchase trained by Shug McGahey. Has Jose Ortiz aboard now. Two back, Conquest Warrior beat Antiquarian. Now, I don't think you could take a lot out of Antiquarian because of such a troubled trip that he just had this weekend. So... You know, it was a poor performance from a, from where he placed, but I don't think you can look into that. And then last race, Merritt was a horse that finished second. If you remember Merritt, he's one of the horses that scratched uh, out of the Fountain of Youth, as did just about everybody that day. Um, so you can't really do as much of the, well, he beat these two horses and they've had a good uh, race since. Uh, but he is the only horse that has a victory at the distance. They're going a mile and an eighth, and that's something that I took note of. Right. Uh, Conquest Warrior three to one's a little bit light on what I would prefer. I'd like that to be a little bit higher for me to really feel comfortable. Um, just curious of your thoughts on Conquest Warrior, who will be one of those horses coming from off the pace. I I like this horse. I just unless he steps forward and he's totally uh, capable of doing that, he's obviously well bred and well thought of. With them paying a million dollars for the horse, uh, those performances have been good. I did note that it's one of only two horses in here that has gone the mile and an eighth. The only horse that's got a win at a mile and an eighth. Although looking at that race, uh, it wasn't a particularly strong field. The 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 times aren't that great in my opinion the speed figure came back as an 84 which was the exact same figure the horse ran uh, in breaking his maiden so I, I i need to see a pretty significant step forward to think that he's going to uh, compete with uh, at least uh, fierceness and and potentially hades in here i i see those two as the the clear one two punch in here all right, well, those are some chalky plays from you. Let's to give the viewers, you know, we're, we're six or seven days out here. We do our best to just do a little bit of a first analysis. First looks going through here. Who do you have uh, as far as like a longer shot or maybe a value play that you'd be interested in playing in the Florida Derby? I've already talked about him, and, and it's real macho. Real Macho is a horse that uh, that I like going back and looking at the races. Uh, one of the, the more experienced horses in here got five good races, although, uh, you know, a couple maidens, a couple optional claimers, but uh, ran well in the Fountain of Youth. And a lot of people may look at that race and say, well, the horse faded. And, and again, uh, that was a, a day in particular uh, going against door knock to where wasn't able to close into that race. And uh, the speed was holding very well at Gulfstream that day. But he here's a note. I mean, it, it just finishing fourth in the fountain of youth. I think there was a horse last year by the name of mage who finished fourth in the fountain of youth through uh, through similar uh, kind of race and uh, came back and finished second and won a little race called the Kentucky Derby. Nothing wrong with that. That's a good, uh, you know, good angle to follow. Of course. Now I uh, I'm really excited to see Hades run back. 
uh, the owner talked about how this horse just eyeballs all the horses and does not give up. This is a game. This is a gamer. Uh, so Hades is one that I'm most excited to see come back this weekend. But if I'm looking at some value play, Tim, I want you to look at number one, Frankie's Empire. And I think that this is an interesting – a horse that this morning, if I told you that that's the one I was going to be talking about tonight, I would have said you're crazy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about the distance – a little bit um, average winning distance of only 6.9. But one thing that I circled on my past performances as I was going through this. Okay. Now I'm not a huge speed figure player, but I do pay attention. And me and Matt DeSantis always talk about horses that are Im continually improving with their speed figures. Okay. Right. First two times we're going to go by, I use Brisnet first two races. He couples a 69. Okay. Comes back, and when you see a horse that's two, three, and they couple their lifetime best, you can absolutely expect a step forward. Comes back, goes 75, 75, 75. Those are two races over the mile. One of them's in a muddy track. One of them's six furlongs. Okay, that's three 75s in a row. Comes back off the layoff, goes to parks, puts up a 93, comes from off the pace, and has a nice surge going six and a half. Comes back. On February 3rd at Gulfstream in front of Le Dombro, puts up another 93 coming from off the pace at seven furlongs. They then stretch him out to a mile 16th in the Fountain of Youth, tracks three wide and finishes third and gets a 92. So that's three speed figures in a row, basically 92, 93. Maybe we haven't seen the best yet of Frankie's empire. And another step forward is absolutely going to put this horse in the crosshairs. And at 12 to one, I think that's going to float up and Frankie's empire, at least for me right now on Sunday night, and don't take this to the bank yet. I'll be doing Dublin down later this week and we'll be live Thursday night. Uh, so this will certainly change, but Frankie's empire was uh, a horse that I think is actually some value and maybe one that you want to put underneath. Like, look at West Saratoga, who blows up the exact of this past weekend. Uh, you know, you get a horse like that, they they sneak in here and they can absolutely improve when they're three year olds in their in the March of their three year old season. And and Frankie's Empire is another horse. When I was looking at Real Macho, they both came out of that race. And if you look, Frankie's Empire finished right in front of Real Macho. I just, as I evaluated the race, both of those horses were just off of the hot pace. And I told you that was a day that I thought speed was holding. And that's why they weren't able to close on Doorknock and, and Ladombro in that race. But I, I just thought that out of the two, Frankie's Empire had probably the better trip and, and should have been able to close a little easier than Real Macho. I think Real Macho re ran into a little more trouble and, uh, and and had the worst trip out of it and has the, the probably the, the best opportunity to improve. But it would not surprise me at all to see Frankie's Empire improve and be that horse. Yeah, and I could even make a case for the three and the four as far as value plays with Grand, Grand Mo the first. I think the distance is going to help this horse. The dam's average winning distance of 8.1, uh, going to be coming from off the plate. The pace started on the synthetic, ran on the grass, and then run on the dirt, put back-to-back -back high 80s up. And then this number three, did you did you notice at all that you know everyone's going to be talking about fierceness, but... Rapoli and Pletcherk and Irad come back with a $700,000 horse here on the number three, bail us out. Right. And, and it just it just makes you wonder, you know, OK, so this is the horse that uh, they bring in uh, to, to run up against fierceness. What's the strategy? Obviously, they're not going to run counter, uh, but uh, it, it is a very interesting uh, horse in the race. And, and you wonder uh, how this horse is going to play out. I, I, I did go back and watch the maiden race and, and still we're we're going to have to see a, a huge step forward and coming off of the synthetic at Gulfstream. It's it's, it's definitely going to have to be a, a monster step forward. But with these connections and. Uh, Todd Pletcher and I read Ortiz, how can you count them completely out of the race ever? You absolutely cannot. You'll have plenty of more coverage on Florida Derby and Arkansas Derby this week. Tim has just uh, turned his light green in the background because, Tim, you, your countdown is on to Keelan, my friend, right? It, it is. You know, I've, I'm excited for this race because this is a time that I call the state races. We got Florida Derby next weekend. We got Arkansas Derby the weekend after that. Keeneland opens. I will be there, as will a lot of the folks from Trust the Profits. Uh, so come out and see us that weekend. Uh, uh, drop us a, a message if you're going to be at Keeneland for opening weekend. But we will be there for the bluegrass and uh, looking forward to these preps as we start heating up in the big races and preparing for the Kentucky Derby.
and the big purses too. I was so it was so cool this weekend to see uh, V Shaker in the game of silks win sixty six hundred dollars for his victory in the Louisiana Derby with catching freedom. Uh, that's real cash being paid out to him. And and you got to think back, he had that horse last season, you know, so you're, you're with these horses for a year and that's pretty cool as trust the profits now has a stable. And uh, you know, as you, as you're building that momentum up to the Kentucky Derby, I can really feel the excitement within the game of silks and in the discord. So come on in and check that out as well. My name's Colin Sheehan. His name is riders up Tim. Uh, over on your ex. Tim, you going to be in the lounge Thursday night? I will definitely be in the lounge on Thursday. All right. Good. So stop by Thursdays. You can live handicap with the team. Plenty of coverage here right on Trust the Profits. Like and subscribe. Until next time, good luck, everybody.